beautiful adopted daughter. And uh, I've always, and she's graduating this year. I'm proud of her. But anyway, the Lord be praised. So, Brother Johnson, Lord bless you. We're proud you're here. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. I'm going to say something right off the bat, and it'll mean something. It'll mean more tomorrow night when I say it again, because you'll know me. Levies are shaking in this town. You know what a levy does? A levy dams up the water. They're moving. They're moving tonight in the spiritual world. Levies are just moving. Something is fixing to break. I'll say that tomorrow night and you'll shout. Hallelujah. Man. Are you ready for it? Have you made room for it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A few months back, and again, I, I've pastored for 24 years, and so tonight's an interview. You interviewing me, me interviewing you, I'll find out what you respond to. You'll find out my style. But I just feel like go ahead and going. I just feel. And so we're just going to go ahead. You have to, tonight you'll have to trust your pastor that got me here. And now after this, it's all on me. I know. But a few months back, and I'm saying this because it, I, I was up here earlier today praying and this touched me. A few months back, I'm not a baseball fan at all. I, I don't do that. Nothing wrong with it, I don't reckon. Um, but I, got in, I was at the church working and I got in my car and I had to go to the hardware store. And there was a St. Louis Cardinals baseball game on. And, and I don't know any of the people. I'm not trying to start out being carnal here. But on the radio, the, the, the game was on, and the announcers announced this certain guy, and I wrote it down. His name was Tom, Tommy Edmond, I think. He was coming up to bat, and the announcer said, now Tommy Edmond doesn't hit a whole lot of home runs, but he's got home run power. And the announcer went on to say, I'm not expecting a home run but I wouldn't be shocked if I saw one. And all them words caught my attention. I thought, well, I want to hear what this, I want to see what this guy does. So I parked and I waited. He fouled out. He popped up and fouled out. I'm like, oh, well, all right. So I went in and got my stuff and come on back out. And it was Wednesday night. But I was stuck with those words. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but he has home run power. And so I, I, I got on the platform right for Wednesday night service, and I watched people coming in. There was this one lady that came in with a walker and oxygen. She'd been in the hospital for 60 days with COVID. She come in, got to her seat. Another sister been in the hospital for a month. With COVID, she came in, and she sat down with her oxygen tank. But one of our board members came in. He'd been having some trouble with his feet. He came in, took his shoes off, and just put them under the pew and just sat there. And as I watched people walking in, staggering in, 
limping in. I whispered, devil, we might not hit a home run tonight. But don't you ever forget that we possess home run power. And if the pitch is right, and the swing is right, and my mind's right, and my heart's fixed, and my praise is there, there's just no telling what God can do in this place. I don't care who's sick. I don't care who's limping. Hell may say we got them tonight. But there's a devil that says, no, 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 no. I've seen that pastor pack them out at a ladies' conference. I've seen that church pack it out. I've seen people lay hands. I've seen those folks lay hands and pray and the sick were healed. They, they, they might not hit a home run, but you can't, you can't knock them out just yet because they have the Holy Ghost. And there's something about the Holy Ghost. Maybe we ought to stand right now and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to lift my hands. I didn't come tonight expecting to hit a home run, but you just watch out, devil. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift my hands and I'm going to stretch my faith out right now. Hallelujah. Don't count us out just yet. I have the picture on my phone. I said just about what I said that night to the church about that baseball guy. The next morning at 6 o'clock, I had one of my saints text me a picture. He said, you're not going to believe it. Tom Edmond hit two home runs that game. Just because you fell out. You better get back up in that battle box. You might be out this time. But there's another time coming. There's a next time coming. And in that same game, two. Oh, you better watch out, devil. There's nothing more dangerous than a limping church that says that's enough. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel like in the spirit, just hitting a home run tonight. Just showing the devil. Just showing the devil. I'm not done. I'm not done. God's not done with this church. God's not done with me. We got a couple of strikeouts here, but you just watch. I'm coming back to church, and something's going to happen. When I call that name, something is going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, does anybody feel the Lord in this house? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe that God can heal somebody tonight. Amen. I believe that. I believe what God can do. Hallelujah, I believe. You may have your seats. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm, I'm about to get comfortable. And that's My wife says don't get comfortable here. But I'm about to get comfortable. Hallelujah. Because I believe that God can do all things. I don't know if it happened here in Virginia, but this past summer, God just showed off in the Bible Belt area there in Arkansas, Kentucky, in that area. There was a sandstorm in Africa, in the Sahara Desert. And there was a certain period, you can Google me and find all this out. There was a certain 
time this year that you could come out in my yard and you could look and there was like a, a haze in the area. And they said that that haze was the sand from the Sahara Desert in Africa. I don't know if it happened here in Virginia, but you can, you can, Google, all, you can, you can Google me on everything that I say. Because I don't have to impress you. I'm not interested in impressing you. Amen. I don't do revivals. I have revivals. So this is the first three-night revival, four-night I've had in, that I've done in a long time. So I'm not interested in accolades and pats on the back. But in my house in Arkansas, there was a haze. The desert, sand. Now, it wasn't grains I could feel, but it was just a haze. And as I sat there and watched that, I thought, wow. Man could never do this. From Africa. My, my, I, I, I preached about this like six weeks in a row at my church. They, I had the miles up and the map up and everything. And I said, God, if you can do that, if you can bring sand across the sea, through all the trees and all of that, whatever he's got to do, and, and bring it to my front yard and it's just a haze. If you can do that, then God, you can do this. Whatever this is. And God said, I'm just showing off. I brought the, the desert to you. And I thought, God, there's just no telling what you can do. He's an amazing God. Has he ever healed you? Has he ever, has, has he ever healed anybody in here? Has he ever rescued you? Has he ever saved you? Isn't it awesome, God? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to ask my wife. Do I, can she sing? Sister Johnson, come on up and sing. I'm going to give these people time to kind of just marinate and say, okay, I think he's all right, preacher. So when I get back, we can just go at it. We just don't have time for an interview. It, it, spiritually speaking and physically speaking, we just don't have time. You just got to know I'm okay. I'm not going to be the best preacher you've ever heard, but I will give you my best every service. Um, That's all I can do. Amen. Amen. And we're going to have a good time this week. I'm excited about uh, what God is going to do. Amen. My church is praying for me right now. They're, they're excited about what's going on and Hallelujah. We're just going to have a good, good time. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Let's worship with my, I'm glad, I'm glad I got my wife, I got Dacia. We have a 25-year-old that's in Mississippi, a daughter, Mary. Got two grandsons and a granddaughter coming. And uh, so they're over there doing a work for God in, in Aberdeen, Mississippi. And so we're glad for them. And Dacia's here. And uh, amen, she's just going to, we're going to have a good time. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Could you, could you just forget about everything that's happened today and not dwell on what's going to happen tomorrow? Can we just give God a few minutes? Can, can we give God a few minutes tonight? Let's worship the Lord. And I have felt the leading of his hands, but today my eyes they look much higher to see the face of the great. Touch the hem of his garments, and I have felt the leading of his hands. But today, my eyes they look much higher to see the face of the great. I am. 
Yeah, is that your song? Is that your song tonight? I want more of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I wonder if we could stand tonight for the reading of the word. You know, you're just going to have to get tired of just the, the mundane thinking and the the lackadaisical. We we all have to see. We're we're all in this together. This is this this is my church. This is your church. That we, we in all this together. I got to help you, and you got to help me. I did a funeral in Indiana last week, and then I did a wedding in 26 degree weather outside, just a few days ago. People in Arkansas are plum crazy by a river. 26, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But the funeral in Indiana, I, I had some issues going on when, when we were in Indiana, physical issues and other things, and, and there was a group of people there that just for 14 years of our life just was there. And at this funeral, the Lord showed me the, the lesson of life, the secret of life. I've got it. I'm going to write a book and make a couple hundred dollars. I got the secret of life. The secret of life is you being a part of somebody else's life. That's it. Just be a part of it. I can't bulldoze and kick doors down, and, but I can help you. I can be a part this week in your life of helping you to get through something. And, and you're going to help me. That, that's what life is about, being a part. I, I watch those people come through the funeral and and, and these people that once was my saving grace were now just shaking my hands and walking on. And, and I wanted to just do more. And God said, that part's over. I put them in your life for a part, for a season. And uh, they, they carried me through. Amen. You're not here by yourself. Somebody got you here. Hello. Somebody had a part in getting you to where you are. Amen. Whether it's good or bad, they had a part in it. Amen. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 24, Second Samuel 24, verse 17. Well, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a, a task if I can do this. I, is it behind me too? Oh, there's too many stars. This is, yeah. Do you have that? And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned 
Now, I, I, I'm a preacher of the Word, so I want the Word to minister to you, okay? Yes. Nothing special about what I'm going to say, but it's the Word. I, David said, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arana looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arana went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arana said, Wherefore is my lord the king come of the servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arana said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments, and the other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things did Arana as a king give unto the king. Arana said unto the king, The Lord thy God, do you accept these? You need to be careful of what you accept. Don't get caught up on, this is free. Because you might have to pay later. And the king said unto Arana, No, nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doeth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen of the fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar. David did it. He didn't have somebody do it. He did it. He sinned. He did wickedly. He built the altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so that the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. The book of Psalms 119 and 164. Seven times a day, David said this, seven times a day, do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments? David said that. David said, I praise the Lord seven times a day. I want to title this thought tonight, How Much Did You Pay for Your Altar? How much did you pay for your altar? Amen. I wonder if we could pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful, wonderful day. I pray, God, that you would touch our hearts, our minds right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, for all that you're going to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may have your seats tonight. Thank you for coming to the house of God tonight. Amen. I have recently come to a point of prayer with God. I've been in church for 35 years, and I've come to a point in prayer with God, an understanding of what prayer is. And I'm going to talk about that and praise tonight. Praise and an altar. I'm all for praise. I'm all for, for running and jumping and hooping and hollering. and I'm all for praising the Lord. You see, your praise reflects what God has brought you out of. If God's brought you out of a lot, and you're appreciative of it, 
you got a crazy praise going on. And you got a I don't care attitude about the person next to you. I don't care if my praise bothers you. If you knew where he brought me from, it would scare you to death. Huh? Your praise doesn't really cost anything. It, it, it's something that God does for you. And so it, it, it's, it, praise is so easy that, that the requirement is just to be breathing. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. So, so he's made it where anybody and everything can praise him. Amen. And so I'm all about praising the Lord. I got in church in 1987. And uh, I got in an independent church there in Kentucky. And they were on fifth gear. I mean, they shouted, shouted, shouted. And they would sing that song, I Feel the Rain, for 45 minutes. And uh, they, then they'd stop and they'd take a break and sing it again. But if you didn't run, you wasn't right. That's how they just believed. I didn't know any different. I just came in and 17 years old and came into church and, and they were shouting. And if you came in and, and you didn't shout, then they grabbed somebody, come grab you. And you run. And, and sometimes you just had to fake it so they leave you alone. They just, yeah, they just shouting, running, and, and, and the good people, I love that. I love that. That's my pastor. That's my church. I love that. Amen. But I noticed something there that um, wasn't much growth going on. I wasn't growing. I was just shouting, just running all day long. I was in good shape, but didn't know why I was running. And so I, I started realizing, hey, there's got to be something more to this than a praise. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I don't want to start out by offending people. and I, I, I should have done this the last night. But um, uh, we, we have a little chapter there in our church, a Celebrate Recovery chapter uh, that we've started working with some, some folks that's got some, some issues going on in their life. And uh, we start at 6 o'clock, we eat at 6, and then at 7 we have a big lesson in our, our, our sanctuary, and then we break up into small groups. Well, I noticed that in the big lesson, is, we kind of worship, we kind of go a little bit off from the, the program, and we, we have some worship songs, and then, then I do a little teaching, preaching, whatever. I, 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 read, I bring the book to the pulpit, and that's about it. <laughs> and then I go. And, uh, but I noticed that there are some students there. They're true students there. They can praise the Lord. I'm telling you, they can, they, they've got a beautiful praise. It's just perfect. They can they lift their hands and they praise and tears, tears come down. And some of them mean speaking in tongues. And they have a beautiful praise. They could just, and they know the song. And they, I'm talking about the true students of this rehab service program that we do, the true students uh, that, that have issues and going on in their life, they, they, they can praise with the best. But when we take a break from the big class and go to small groups, we got to wait on them because they cross the street smoking. They cross street smoking. We gotta wait till they get done smoking. Can I come down and can I, can I come and be with you? Amen. So we gotta wait on them. They can out praise me. And I'm waiting on them because they're over. Mm. Huh. I'm afraid that if we're not careful, we're gonna have an experience with praise. And not with an altar. And a praise reflects where you came from. But an altar will reflect where you're going. And we can't get stuck seven times a day praising the Lord. We can't get stuck on the ideology, I'm just praising the Lord. Because if we're not careful, praise will camouflage what prayer can do. 
and we're just shouting and shouting and praising, and, and we haven't talked to him. Amen, amen, amen. So we got to be very careful. This, we, we, I know what I'm talking about. I visit churches. We, we are the most talented group of people there is. We have the prettiest buildings that there. We have. We're no longer the church on the other side of the tracks. We're the church that own the tracks. We have beautiful sound system. We have. We have all kinds of stuff going on. We we, we just built a new sanctuary, and we got a sound system about thirty thousand dollars, and not nobody in there know how to run it. We got a good. One. Uh, yeah. We, 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 we own the tracks now. We're we, we not just Pentecost, dumb old Pentecost. We, we're intelligent. Amen. We are. And if we're not careful, we're going to sing our way out of a walk with God. We're going to shout our way to a point that we miss what God wants for us. As my wife sung a closer walk. I want to... I I want a deeper walk, but today, but today, I've touched the hem of his garment before, but today, I want something a little bit more than just a shout. I, I need something a little bit more, hallelujah, to, 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 to tell you where I've came from, because that only lasts for a moment. I need to know where I'm going, and I need to let you know where I'm going. I've been in prayer today. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. We got to be very, very careful. David, David said, I have sinned. Now, this is a man that praised the Lord seven times a day. This is a man that shouted and danced when the ark, you know David. He's a shouter. He's a praiser. But now there's sin in his life. Now he's done wickedly in his life. He has seen an angel take its hand and kill thousands of people with a plague. There's some things in your world that praise won't fix. Don't get it sideways. I'm all for praise. I'll outshout all of you. I'm for it. But, but I, I've been around the block, and I, I, I've been teaching this to my church, and I've been seeing this, and, and, and our church is now growing a little bit. We're having, we're having prayer all hours of the day. we got people coming in at 5.30 a.m. praying. They're coming in at 9 o'clock at night praying. Because they're understanding. I got to have more. I, my appetite is getting a little bit different. I can't just be this status quo of just joining a church. I got to make a difference in my church. David said, D David said, I've seen angels kill people. There's a plague going on. And we know we can't dance this out. We need an altar. Some things an altar will fix that praise won't. Amen. Now that we understand that, we have to understand how we purchase the altar. As David walked up there, the king Arana walked out to meet him and said, Hey, you're King David. I will give you everything you want. I'll give you the oxen. I'll give you the tools to make the altar. I'll even get some men to make the altar for you. And David said, no, I'm going to buy it for full price. I don't want a discounted revival. I don't want a half-off Clarence rack walk with God. I I'm not going to put something on the altar that didn't cost me something. There's got to be a cost. When there's a sacrifice on the altar, it's got to come from your heart. Hallelujah. Your praise, there's no cost at all. But when you walk with God, when you pray, and God says you need to stop that, you need to start that, there's a sacrifice that comes in that says I'm going to live this way. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We, we, us pastors, we can look at you and see how much you paid for your altar. I can't 
say it because my home folk will hear it. I want to jump on their phone. I've got the greatest church in Arkansas. But it bothers me when I hear them say, well, I can't make it to church tonight. Aunt Betty Lou's coming over. We've been praying for Betty Lou to come to church, not your house. And so Betty Lou comes to your house and you stay home. I know about how much you paid for that altar. Amen. Because, see, when you buy it at full price, you build the altar. You've, there's a cost. Amen. If you're walking with God tonight and you've not paid a price, you know the price I'm paying? I, I'm talking about when you come to the Lord, there's some family members that says, you know, you're going to have to choose church or me. Amen. There's a price that you have to. Anybody works in those factories and and everyone laughs at you and this and that and you know what I'm talking about. There's a cost that you got to make up your mind and you say, you know what? I, I paid full price for this gospel. I don't want a cheap gospel. Pastor, I don't want you to preach a little bit and keep a little bit away, but I, I want a full price gospel. Because I want a full price revival in my house. Amen. So, so, some of you worried about, well, my, my teenager ain't living right. How much you pay for your altar? How much did you give for your altar? David said, I'm not going to give, I'm not, I'm not, you're not going to give me nothing. I need to pay for this thing. It's kind of like the little Shumanite lady that, that, that Elisha came by and visited every so often. The book of Kings, you know the story. Where she finally went to her husband. She said, I've touched the hem of his garment, but today. And she went to her husband and said, can we build a room? Can we, can we build a room for the man of God that when he comes by, that he might stay a little longer? She, she got tired of the occasional visit from the Spirit of God. But she said, let, let, let's, let's make a room. Let's make room for him. That when he comes, it would be easy for him. And, and you can see the husband. Now, you know that's going to cost. There's a price. We can't just build a wall. Just, you know, there, you got to buy lumber. you got to knock this wall out. you got to move some stuff. Huh? To, to get him to stay a little longer, you might have to move some stuff out. Make room to add something over here and take this out. Can I preach for a second? Does anybody want God to stay a little longer in your life? Does anybody, are, are, are you just okay with a song and a praise and let's go home? Or is there somebody here that says, you know what? I'm going to be a part of the levees breaking. Hallelujah. I'm tired of the levees vibrating. I'm going to kick them down. And when the levees break, I'm going to be right there. And the tidal wave is going to take hold. And I'm going to be a part of the greatest revival of this church. But it's not going to come with a song and a dance. It's going to come because somebody rolled out of a warm bed and said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pay full price for the altar. I will sacrifice. I'm not going to put what grandma put on there. I'm going to put my own sacrifice. Amen. So the husband said, you know what? That's going to cost to build a room. She said, you don't understand. I need more. I need more than just him coming by once or twice a month. But if I had something here that he could just come in and could stay. So don't you enjoy that presence that he brings with him? That, that, that holiness? And every time Elisha left, we would talk about the presence of God and how great it would be if we just had this all the time. So they built the room. It cost them some money. 
some sweat, some sacrifice. Huh? I'm talking to some folks tonight. I think that you're just on the verge of saying, you know what? I've been faithful, but with no faith. Huh? Huh? And we can, we can blame the last two years on some of it. We've been faithful. Wouldn't miss a church service for nothing but presenting no faith. Huh. i tell you what I did. And I, I'm not going to get into it because you don't want to hear it and I don't want to talk about it. But a couple of years ago, when our president got up and, and shut down the country. And, and at that time, Arkansas, they joined in and shut down and said only 10 people could be in your building. I don't know what it was here in Virginia. But in Arkansas, only, they only let 10 people in their church. And, um, I, you know, I, 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 I was for that guy two years ago. And, uh, but I said, no, 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 no. You're not going to touch my walk with God. Because you weren't there. The night he saved you. And this might not mean a whole lot to you. But it means everything to me. I've not got over the fact that he loves me. So I come out of my house. We live right behind the church. I went over there and I began to pray, God, give me something. We're not going to have 10 people. We're not, we can't do that. I'm a team player. I don't want to be crazy with the country, but don't you cross the line with me and God. So God gave me something. We had church. We had church six nights a week. We had a new auditorium and the old fellowship hall. I put 10 over there and well, about 12 over there, and about 12 or 13 over here, and we had to break it up, and I had to put the Smith family on Monday night, the Jones family on Tuesday night. We had this six nights a week, we had church. On Sunday, we had four or five services. It was right at Easter, we had like eight services on Easter. with my altar I got up there and I preached on Monday night first Monday night something on this on Naboth wasn't going to sell his, his vineyard he wasn't going to sell his vineyard he said it's not for sale it's not selling the vineyard Tuesday night had a whole new group of 10-12 people they didn't hear it so I preached it again Naboth was not going to sell so Wednesday another whole group of people about 12 came and I said, I'm going to preach it again. It went so, it was so good. And you know what I found out? I found out that nobody missed church those, those that two months that we did that. Because they said, you know what? Monday night's mine. If I miss Monday night, I can't go on Tuesday. You know, gone is the day of us saying, well, they won't stop us from having church. We can't say that no more. So if it's not in here, if you don't have a, if you just got a song, nah, shut up. The, the fourth night, Thursday, I got up, Naboth, I'm not going to sell. I shut up. Friday night, we were getting ready for church in old Jasha. She got a little bit of Sister Linville in her. She hollered out, Mom. You think Naboth will sell that vineyard tonight? Because <laughs> they was coming every night hearing the same old message. Oh, our church grew in that moment. We paid off our church in that season. $500,000. We paid our church off in that dark season of you can't come to church. Don't tell me you can't come to church. 
I'll sneak in the back door. You don't know like I know. Now, now some, some of you, some of you have been raised in church and y'all good, but the rest of us, we got to censor our testimony. All you're hearing is the PG part. And that's all you're going to hear this weekend is the PG part. The rated R part I ain't going to talk about. So I, I, I didn't get to just walk in. I, I snuck in the back door of the church. I'm in love with this place. I, I've got an altar in my heart. I've got an altar in my life. I've got an altar in my closet. I've got an altar. I've got to walk with God. You can take my song. The piano can break down. The choir can quit singing. And I'm going to keep walking with my God. Because I've bought the truth. And I refuse to sell it. I'll pay full price for this altar, for this walk with God. Don't give me something secondhand. I want a full price. Oh, hallelujah. Praising and singing the Lord does not remove carnality. Most of the time it produces it. singing and you're thinking you're good singing you're thinking well I'm pretty good at this I'm a pretty good singer huh? but nobody talks about you know I'm a pretty good prayer I'm praying really good nowadays no one talks about that because that's private huh? you gotta be careful you know singing praising is not going to remove the carnality out of the church and we got carnal Christians not here, but over there in Arkansas. Not at my church in Arkansas, but in other churches in Arkansas. See, I can't be me tonight. I want to be me so bad. I can't. I can't. I... Carnal Christians. Good Christians. Carnal. They're carnal. They're not smoking dope. They're not drinking. They're not smoking. They're not looking like they shouldn't look. They're just carnal. Faithful without faith. Huh? Wouldn't miss a minute of church. But couldn't step out and call him. In the midnight hour. Oh, I need God, don't you? I need a walk with God. I don't need a song. I need a walk. During, during, that, during that time of, uh, of that, that season of we praying and having six churches every week and we were so tired but so strength, had so much strength but so weak. I was taking the garbage can out one day, one of those kinds that you roll behind you and we have a gravel parking lot and I was just worn out. You know, you know the two years ago, the season, you know the wore out. You know, you know, the fighting with everybody, you know. So I was dragging that trash can on that gravel. It had wheels. You know how that would sound. I'm just dragging it. And, and, and I stop, and, and I hear some, some, somebody coming behind me in gravel. And I thought it was Daisha, again, acting like Sister Linville. I thought Daisha's going to try to scare me because I can hear her walking on gravel. You can't sneak on gravel. And so she's coming up behind me. And I thought, I'm going to get her. I turned around and said, whoa, and wasn't nobody there. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, it's just me. That will produce him walking with you and him talking with you and him being right there with you. 
to Elijah in the cave, he was a still, small voice. That means whispered. He whispered to God. It's not important what he said. What was important, he was close enough to him. I want him close enough. I want him close enough. But he's not going to get close to me because I put grandma's sacrifice on the altar. He's not going to be close because somebody in the pew next to me prays all the time. He's going to get close to me. And everybody in my house is going to get close to him. When everybody in the house decides, especially dad decides, I'm going to pay full price for an altar. I want revival. I want a true walk with God. I want holiness without no man shall see God. I want something powerful in the hallways of my house. Oh, hallelujah. Again, I say, if your house is not right, how much did you pay? How much did you pay married couples for the altar? Hallelujah. I'll, I'll pay full price for that. You're not going to give me something. You, no, you're not going to give me all your tools. You're not going to give me something. I don't want a religion that someone has handed down. I want to pray this down. I want to fast this down. I want to live holy. I want the, the conviction to grip my heart. Oh, hallelujah. Does anybody want a closer walk with God? I wonder if you could lift your voice right now to the Lord. If you could just lift your voice to God right now. Somebody's making up their mind. You know what? I'm going to do this right. I'm going to do this right this time. I'm going to, I've, been, I've been just getting by and nobody's thought nothing, but hallelujah. I want to make a difference. Hallelujah. You want to stop sin in your life? Have an altar in your life. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Somebody's getting a hold of this thing right now. I got a feeling somebody's going to be up here with me tomorrow praying. Hallelujah. I got a feeling someone says, you know what? I, I've been doing some carnal things. I've been watching some stuff. I've been looking at some stuff. But I'm going to get that down. I'm going to buy an altar. I'm going to buy the threshing floor. I'm going to pay full price for it. There's a revival coming. And I don't want to miss it. Oh, hallelujah. Does anybody feel what I feel in this place tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, Shanda Raboshata Raboshata. Rika Toramboshata. The Bible said that David built an altar and it entreated the Lord, and the plague stopped. How are you living tonight? It still, it still pays to live right. You can't, you can't live wrong and die right. You got to live right. I said you got to live right. Hallelujah. You got to say, you know what? David, David could have had anybody build that altar. He was the king. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to work. I'm going to sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder tonight who in this place says, you know what? I've touched the hem of his garment before. But today, but today I want something more. I want a deeper walk with God. I want a closer walk with God. Hallelujah. I, I want to keep on dancing, but I want to put an altar in there. Oh, hallelujah. 
I'm fixing to close. I, I, actually, I actually build altars. I do on the side. I love it. Live edge. Slabs. Cedar. Walnut. Beautiful stuff. I'd say so myself. I make altars. I made one the other day, and a fellow came up, looked at it, and I had a pro- And I'm pretty cheap too. I'm really cheap because wood's expensive, and I'm cheap. I sell them for like hundred and fifty dollars, and I put hundred and seventy in it. This guy came up and said, "I'll give you seventy five dollars for that." And I'm like, "Something got a hold of me." And I said, "Why would you want to Jew down an altar?" Because if this is used right, your kids are going to get a new daddy. Your wife is going to get a new husband. Why do you want this cheap? We, we don't negotiate anything else. We complain about the gas prices, but we pay it. And come to an altar, a place that you can pray and give your life to God. That's not the place you negotiate. That's the place you fall on and say, here I am. Take out what needs to be taken out. Bring in what needs to be brought in. same lesson with the old skins and the new skins and the wine being poured into the old skins. It don't work. You got to move some stuff out. But you don't realize what needs to be moved out until you're at an altar. Until God breaks you. Then you realize, hey, that's wrong. I've been doing this wrong. It's at an altar. I don't counsel praying people. I don't counsel praying people. Oh! They pray, and God does a work in their lives. Just like He'll do a work in your life. Now, I know you people have an altar. I know you people got prayer in your background. I know that. I'm not that ignorant. But I am, I, I, I know people, and I know me. I know what I've been doing. Let's just get by. Let's just get through this season. Let's get through this election. Let's get through this moment. Let's get through this. Always hoping for something else. And bypassing valuable moments where you can talk to God. That God can talk to you. Oh. I don't care if I'm a hundred years old and you come and visit me at the best nursing home that she'll put me in. I will tell you about the time I was taking out the garbage can. And God, not the governor, not the mayor, but God, was walking behind this old filthy, lying, thief, drug addict. He walked behind me. When I'm 110, I'll be telling you about that. I might not be able to sing any songs, but I'll tell you the time that I needed a revival in my life. And I didn't get a revival. I just got Jesus walking behind me and saying, it's just me. That was enough. That was enough. I don't need a shout. I don't need a song. I'm going back in the house with tears in my eyes. Jesus was walking behind me. Huh? I don't care if you believe that or not. It saved me. 
Huh? It saved me. And the reason that happened is because I've been praying. We've been coming to the church. And we've been giving our lives to God. And giving six nights a week of preaching the gospel. Huh? Huh? Does he mean anything to you? Where's the people that's been rescued? Where's the people that's been saved? God saved you. Is there anybody in the room tonight that God rescued you from you? That's why I'm chasing God tonight. Because I'm not going to catch him. I know it. But I'm, as I'm in the process of chasing him, I'm putting so much distance between me and who I used to be. And I'm chasing him. And I'm going to catch him one of these days. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if you could stand with me tonight. How much did you pay for your altar? It shows. I don't know about it because I don't know anybody in here. It shows. And David built there an altar. So the Lord was entreated for the land. And the plague stopped because of an altar. He could have accepted it, and it wouldn't have worked out. Huh? There's a sacrifice to get to this point. Now, Now, we're not martyrs like the true martyrs, but we've been through some stuff. Amen? We've been through a few things. And if you'll stay true to it, God will be there for you. When you need Him. I would challenge this church tonight. Tomorrow might get a little bit better. I doubt it. I doubt it. But I challenge you tonight to say in your heart, you know what? I've been just getting by. And we've all done it. We've all done it. 35 years in church, you don't, yeah, I've done it. Let's just get by. And we have this erroneous idea that if we're not sinning, we're saved. Now, God doesn't have that. We have that. I, don't, I ain't done that, and I ain't done that. I'm sa- No, 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 no. Uh, we have two groups of Christians. The group that, that says, I'm not sinning, so I'm saved. And the other group over here that says, I don't feel him as much as I want to, so I'm not saved. I don't know about you, but I want a fire. I'm praying for a fire. And a year from now or six months from now or two months from now when those levees break in the spirit world and your family comes to this church and you don't even invite them but they say, hey, can I come to your church? It'll be because somebody prayed. This church bought the altar at full price. And when they come, they're going to get a full gospel. Had a full life changing experience. Because this altar is real. And it's genuine. I wonder if you could come and pray. Pray there at your seat or come down and pray. Hallelujah. Can we have a burden tonight?